think I get this question or something like this pretty much every time I ask for video suggestions. So yeah, it's about time I answer it. It's a hard one to answer, which is why I haven't done it before. How do you take care of your mental health? The other one, how do you handle knowing about so much suffering? I don't know if I do such a good job of handling. <laughs> Many of you know I'm on um, antidepressants, but that's more for stress, anxiety, anger issue, stuff like that. And that manages that pretty well, but it doesn't really do anything for sadness or kind of hopelessness. I think I do have some tips, particularly some more recent tips, like very, very recent tips that seem to have helped a lot. And I say that because just yesterday I had an experience of hearing a, a personal story that was just, just very upsetting to me. Basically, this person told me that they have not seen their two older children who are still very young since October, 2019. Their wife was pregnant with their third. And so they thought it'd be a, you know, a good idea, a good time to um, have the kids visit their grandparents in South Korea, late 2019 pandemic. And so, yeah, they haven't been able to see them in well over a year. I pretty much cried like the whole way home. Number one, it made me realize that, wow, I haven't really felt like that in a while. Maybe the little changes I've made have really made a difference. Um, even though I did cry like the whole way home, <laughs> it was like, wow, I haven't, I haven't really felt like this in like a long time. I can't even remember the last time, which is like, okay, cool. And then number two, this isn't the worst possible thing. They're able to zoom every single night, you know, which is of course not the same thing, but the kids are so young. They're probably not even really going to remember this. And if they do, it's going to be like, Hey, the pandemic. Oh yeah. We were like with our grandparents and didn't get to see our dad. Isn't that like crazy? Do you know what I mean? Trying to be more positive about the situation, knowing that they were coming back very, very soon this summer, which it's almost summertime, right? Uh, more and more people are getting back vaccinated. There doesn't seem to have been any downside to the CDC coming out and saying that, like, yeah, if you're fully vaxxed, like you can pretty much go back to living normally, right? People were very concerned that, I don't know, all the people who didn't believe in masks were just going to stop wearing masks or something. Of course that hasn't happened. Those type of people probably aren't already aren't wearing masks. I just kind of realized like, oh wow, I don't normally do that. I don't normally try to see like the bright side or go like, hey, it's it's not really that bad. You don't need to sob about this for that long. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's okay. That's normally not me. Normally I just doom and gloom forever. So the main thing I think I did is really get off of Twitter for the most part. I get on it every once in a while, but Number one, I completely uninstalled it from my phone. So I can get on and on my phone, but I have to get on the browser. It's like a whole thing. We're just so fucking lazy. If it's not just right there and you tap it, you're much less likely to get on, right? So that seems to have made a huge difference for me. And then also, this is something I just did, I think in the last month or so, I went through all the accounts I follow, which wasn't that much, I guess, but um, I went through all of them and I unfollowed any accounts, even accounts I liked, you know, people I like, whatever, but who tend to post more negative stuff, even if it's a jokey thing and they're joking about stuff. No, I just unfollowed them and specifically stuff that like really, really aff affects me personally and really makes me feel that like hopeless sadness kind of thing. So yeah, that's made a huge difference. So even when I do go on Twitter, it's just not the same experience at all. And I think that's why I haven't had that like seemingly constant. It's not constant, but often feeling just that, oh my God, I can't believe it. Cause I go on Twitter and I'd see like five different stories of just like, oh my God, that's the saddest thing I've ever heard. Ha what? <laughs> and I'm not experiencing that anymore. I go on Twitter, possums every hour. That That's what I need. Thank you. Yes. And I know some people will say, well, like, how do you stay in the know though? Number one, there's Google alerts. There's lots of other ways that you can follow the news without Twitter. And I would argue that Twitter is like one of the worst ways to, to follow the news. It depends on who you're following. I think we just convince ourselves that we need to be in the know on every single topic when like, why are you going to do something about it? Probably not. You're going to hear about some sad thing that happened and go, oh my God, that's so sad. And it's going to make you feel like shit. And, and that's it. Like veganism. Once you know, once you're already vegan and like thriving, you need like recipe stuff like that. That's fine. But like, once you know, you don't need to keep bombarding yourself with like animal cruelty and what's going on in factory farms and all of that. There are ways to still stay on top of what's going on locally. If there are any measures or something involving animal cruelty or ag gag laws, whatever, there, there are ways to stay on top of that without just like doom scrolling Twitter. And I'm saying Twitter, but obviously the same for Facebook. And I guess Instagram, I don't know. For me, Instagram is like, 
It's a different issue. It's it's food. It's so much local food and local vegan restaurants. It's dough donuts, really. Let's be real. It's dough donuts. God damn it. Focus on the positive. Duh. This is another reason I didn't make this video because I think a lot of this is pretty obvious. <laughs> a lot of people already talk about this in terms of mental health. In terms of social media, follow like possums every hour. Follow Crouton the cow. You know, you can, you can still um, inundate yourself with animal stuff, but just make it positive, right? Follow farm sanctuaries instead of like mercy for animals. Cause a lot of times they're posting undercover stuff that like, again, you know, maybe, maybe we don't need to see. Obviously it's important and a lot of people need to see it, but if you already seen it <laughs> and you've already made changes in your life, you don't need to see it. But there are a lot of, a lot of floofy animal accounts, lots of, you know, chicken and cow and goats and whatnot. Um, also I would say veg news is really, really great. Um, I did that whole news video at the end of the year last year, um, mostly, I think almost exclusively using stuff from veg news. And it's just really great because like everything is positive. It's all like, here's another donut, vegan donut place that opened in Charleston, South Carolina, new vegan burger that's available in Kroger. Here's a, oh, hey, in vitro meat is now being sold in Singapore. So maybe having that as like a bookmark just on your little tab where you can always see and you can just click on it <laughs> and read some headlines real quick. You don't even have to click on the headlines. I know that's like bad maybe, but if the headline is, hey, new vegan ice cream, you, you don't, I don't think you need to read it. You know, you can look at the headline. It's okay. Another thing that helps me sometimes, and this, I think I first heard about it from, it's called like rational something. It's like a response to AA, to like alcoholic or Alcoholics Anonymous, um, which is very higher power based, right? Like you don't have to be religious, but like it is kind of part of the program, you know, but there is a, another kind of version of that that's secular. And one of their big things is um, realizing that no matter how bad you have it, there's there's at least another person who has it worse than you. I actually think this is why the, the privilege discourse can be very useful. I don't think it's normally used this way, unfortunately, but um, I think it can be very useful in terms of our own personal mental health that, you know, to just realize that, wow, there, there are people who are like really struggling way worse than I am, even though I'm in this horrible situation, maybe it can help take the edge off and ideally can help us be more compassionate towards others. Like, wow, I'm really struggling, but like, holy shit, that guy, maybe my life's pretty good and maybe I can actually help this person. Again, that's largely a more personal thing, but I think even for issues like this, where we're thinking, uh, you know, outwardly about, about others and suffering in general, I think it can help. Yes, there's a lot of suffering, but it can always be worse. And it was worse. And largely the trend is a positive one. There's lots of lots of sources um, for more information on that. Again, focus on the positive. And it's it's little things too. Like I was in the, the store the other day and they had just set up their their uh, like sunscreen summer section, right? Cause it's getting hot. Oh my God, it was 90 something degrees yesterday here. What? Horrible. What kind of mainstream sunscreen brands had like cruelty-free and even vegan just on the labels. And then you go to get like pasta and I get the, the Barilla like protein pasta. Barilla, it's like a huge brand, right? And they've got the little vegan, you know, certified vegan heart label on there. Things have changed so much, even just a few years, like especially something like sunscreen, you would not have seen that a few years ago. I wouldn't have seen that a few years ago. I found this uh, new brand. I don't know how new it is, but new at uh, Fred Meyer, I think this uh, simple skincare, I think it's called. And like 99% of it is vegan. And it says right there front and center, you know, cruelty free and vegan. It's very affordable. It's in the like regular skin care section. It's not with the natural stuff. Garnier Fructis or Herbal Essences, one of those says vegan, like right on the front. So just little things like that, man, things have changed so much. How cool is that? That companies, I mean, they're really, they're, they're willing to take up real estate on their packaging, <laughs> right? They're already like crammed packaging because they realize, or they believe that this is so important to consumers that they need to have that on there. That's awesome. Sorry, I know this is kind of all over the place. I just have like a few random notes and I keep forgetting stuff and just, just throwing it in. Point is the trend is largely, largely a positive one and more and more people are becoming interested in veganism um, and not just with food, you know, with with uh, body products and whatnot as well. And in that vein, just to, to see how far we've cr come, because some of you may not know, you may be new to veganism and more new to like experiencing 
um, these sorts of feelings when it comes to animals in particular. I think it can really help to learn more about the past, to read from vegans and learn more about what veganism was like, like in the early 2000s or in the 90s or even before, what was actually available in grocery stores, how hard it was to find out what was in things. <laughs> like even before we had the the allergen labels, that made a big difference, right? Because you can see right on there in bold that, hey, this has milk in it. Okay, fuck off. And then in general, I mean, I learned anything about about the past. Oh my God. We were watching The Terror. I think I mentioned that show recently. So good. Oh my God. In terms of like medicine, because this is back in the 1840s. So like germ theory for these guys was not a thing yet. So there's like a scene where you have a, a doctor or, or one of the uh, nurses or someone um, and he's got like, he's got just a bloody rag and he's like, doesn't, there's no washing his hands. And then another person comes over and he's got the same, the same rag and it, oh God, maybe that sounds silly, but it's just like, wow, we've come so far. Holy shit. Can you imagine not knowing about germs? So yeah, learning more about the past, seeing how far we've come. I know that's not uh, very cool right now, not in vogue among a lot of progressives. Everything is like, no, it's actually still terrible and it's always going to be terrible. And I think that's just really stupid in a horrible way to live life and a horrible way to promote progressivism also, because I mean, how are people going to respond to that? They're going to go, oh, okay, things are just terrible and there's nothing I can do about it. Okay, cool. Bye. That said, sometimes things are just kind of terrible. It's it's the little digs. I was watching the Resident Evil playthrough, uh, Scary Game Squad playthrough, and like a lot of games, there are segments where you kill animals and that's like, you know, food. It increases your stamina and, and whatnot in the game. Permanent increases, I think, right? If you if you make it into, if you have the, the duke uh, turn it into to meals for you. I'm just chilling watching the game, having a fun time, you know, kind of trying to get immersed in the stupid story and then they're like chickens and they're just like regular ass cute little chickens and of course the guys are like oh get the chickens and it's just like it's just funny and you slash the chickens and yes i know it's a video game but like then one of them starts talking about because there are pigs as well and, and they start talking about pigs are delicious every part of the pig's delicious it's like yeah Okay. Bob's Burgers. There's always the Thanksgiving episode with the fucking turkey. You know, I'm just trying to have fun and enjoy a funny animated show. And yes, it's called Bob's Burgers. And yes, they like make burgers, but God damn it. I guess my point to all this is I don't really have any, any terrific answers. You know, I think you have to expect little things like that. And I mean, obviously if you're having breakdowns or something because of little things like that, please see someone. That's that's pretty extreme, right? I think a therapist could really help you there. But otherwise, I mean, we can't expect, we're gonna be sad sometimes, right? <laughs> Everyone's gonna be sad sometimes. And sometimes, you know, we're gonna sob over someone not seeing their children for a year and a half. I mean, fuck. The only useful thing to him from this, video, I think is just social media, moderate your social media, get off of it if you really need to, but at least call your like account so that it's a more positive experience and then actively seek out more positive stuff. Cause it's out there. You know, I think at some point we do have to take some amount of, um, agency. <laughs> it's not, we can't just say, oh, well, it's only negative stuff out there. Cause that's not true. There are lots of uh, people who are really focusing on putting out good positive news. There's like a, I think there's a whole Twitter account. That's the whole thing. It's just happy, positive stuff, right? So we can definitely curate our lives in a way that includes more of that stuff and less of the negative, can't do anything about this. It's just sad type of stuff. And it's not just sad and hopelessness either. I think a lot of us, we end up spending so much time on social media that you procrastinate and then you end up feeling bad. You have lower self-esteem because you did less than you wanted to do. And was it even worth it? You like, do you even remember the time you really spent just scrolling? Like, it's almost like binge eating. <laughs> it's like you ate all that food and like, do you even really remember it? What? In terms of burnout specifically, there are actually books. I have not read them, but <laughs> there are some books on veganism and activism and burnout. Um, I think I'm a lot, I think I'm more protected there because you know, this is my job. I don't necessarily even consider it activism. When I'm working, I'm working. And when I'm not, that's it. Like, I don't really focus on veganism or anything at all. I don't really even, 
I mean, I guess I, I talk about it some with my partner, obviously. If it's like, hey, there's this new, there's new dough donuts. They're releasing all their new flavors. Just saying. They have one called Sour Watermelon and I kind of need to try it. Just saying. But I'm not having like involved uh, political discussions or ethical discussions or anything like that because it's like, no, this is free time now. That is work time. Work time is over. It's time to play Hades. And also having kids. I mean, kids, yeah, they're, they're tough a four-year-old and a two-year-old, it's not always easy. There are, there are tam tantrums. Just today I tried to record this video, sat down, and then I hear the kid and they had to come pretty much right back because tiny baby had just full-on blown out tantrum. So I had to sit with them for an hour to like get them happy again. They do exactly what I used to do where they just won't eat and er everything's nasty. No, that's nasty. <laughs> Even foods they love because they're nasty now. Okay. So you have to wait and try to get them in a good enough mood so they'll try finally just take like a little bite of something. As soon as they do, they're fine. They'll start eating. It's, it's, it, what? Point is, kids are a joy and they're always wonderful and they're never tiring or frustrating. No, of course not. But overall, yeah, I mean, kids are like really fun and it's fun to just be with them and watch them, you know, toddlers up there painting right now. Just watch them painting stuff, just learning new things. I mean, I don't know. It's hard to feel... It's hard to feel hopelessness and sadness when you're surrounded by that much cute and just curiosity about the world, you know? Not, not saying like, hey, go out and have kids if you're having existential crises on the daily or something. No, but I mean, kids are great. Get off Twitter, have babies. That's the message of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Obviously, if you have any other tips, please leave them down below. I'm sure a lot of you do. I'm sure a lot of you can make a much better video than I did. I'm not really good. I mean, mental health is like um, my worst thing, I would say. <laughs> it's the thing I'm not very good at. Um, obviously, I was not able to improve mine without drugs. So, you know, it, it feels weird to even offer tips because yeah, it's the area in my life that I struggle the most on. Just having, you know, a positive outlook. I am just not in my nature. Being more laid back. Nope, 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 nope. If there's nothing to stress about, I will find something, you know, <laughs> even with drugs, like I will find something. <laughs> anyway, thank you again. Uh, like the video if you liked it. Subscribe, support the channel, patreon.com slash a natural vegan. And I will have a new video hopefully very soon. Oh, speaking of Scary Game Squad, there's the new one. Yeah, Tainted Grail. Oh, that's not. Oh, no. <laughs> like I said before, this is the only channel I get notifications for. And I saw ta Tainted Grail Conquest. Now I just think of Taint. I am 12 years old. Uh, Yeah, so I, I assume this was the next Resident Evil upload. But no, I think that's a game called Tainted grail conquest fuck i just want to see the heisenberg dude the whatever is whatever his name is that's the only part of the game i'm excited about the weird factory yes this game is so dumb the last one i feel like was really good actually i really enjoyed seven but this one is just kind of kind of really stupid lichens because there are lichens now i mean not really i guess but i, I don't know it's resident evil